Hey guys, we're headed on the no cooling call. New customer. I was referred to her by a existing customer. She uh, she had to go pick up her granddaughter, I think she said. So she left her garage open and her garage door open for me to get to the thermostat and so I can get to the attic and everything. Uh, so we should be able to get some film on this one for y'all. And hopefully it's something interesting. But if not, we'll film it anyway. Okay. I hear the fan running. Fan on auto. Oh, I have uh, my name with these. I'm going to put one. I could hear the fan. Oh, I know who did this job. That's a stamp grill. That means they have a media filter in the attic. Well, I'm going to wait for the fan to cut off. The fan just cut off. So we're going to go to system. Heat. Cool. 68. Guess there's a hold button on here. I heard it click. That thermostat don't seem like it's. It might be in time delay. The snowflake is flashing. So I think that means time delay. We'll see. Yeah, I know exactly who did this job. The old hanging air handler. See how they do that? They just, they put a piece of sheet metal, screw it to the unit, hang it. And then there's a media filter built into the return air plenum. And there's a fret, look at that little dryer vent, fresh air duct. The unit still has not come on. So I don't know if the thermostat's acting up or if we have a delay. Filter looks clean. The coil is clean. I mean, it's got a little bit of specs on it, but nothing that's gonna hurt nothing. And most of the time, the return duct is undersized on these systems. So let's take a look and see if that's the case on this one. This is a three-ton machine, and I bet you it's got a 14-inch duck on it. I can't find, let me see if I can get under it and find some writing. No, it's actually a 16. Okay, that'll work for a three-ton. Still waiting on the unit to come on. I really think she might have a bad thermostat. Boy, you can tell people been unclogging the drain with there's a CO2 cartridges, a battery, and looks like the breaker on the heat kit's been replaced. All right, I don't have any tools with me. I just came up here, but that thing still hasn't came on. I'm gonna go check the thermostat again. All right. The snowflake is still blinking. I really think it's in time delay. It's 340. I'll give it another five minutes, and if it hadn't came on yet, I'm going to take the thermostat off and jump it. And it's pouring down rain, so I really hope that's all it is. The, the second I cut the camera off, it clicked. Everything went solid. We have fan. We have cooling. And you can hear the fan running. So let's 
Now we get to go fight the rain. Let's see how bad it's raining. No, it's not too bad. All right, I wanna to get to the condenser and make sure it's not trying to start, but let me grab my umbrella. They're usually on the side of the house in these neighborhoods. Velcro strap thing. Got another one down here somewhere. There we go. And there we are. Damn it. Two. Two of them came loose. Could be either side. Stanley Steamer next door. No, oh, here she is. Is she running? She's running. I don't hear no compressor though. It goes in here. got that damn door off AC condenser yep all right I don't think I heard a compressor but uh I mean I guess it's not raining too bad I might as well go ahead and knock this out let me grab my tool bag all right we're definitely gonna have to knock this out now because I just looked at the radar and the weather's just gonna get worse the later it gets Cover off. Oh, no screw over there. Ah, oh, this is a heat pump, which is uh, surprising. We normally don't see heat pumps in this area, but that thing was blowing ice cold air. Can't even see the capacitor size. It's a 40 plus five. Pull the fan off. Pull the herm off. And we'll test it. Capacitor's good. Okay, I'll have to start it back up and take an amp draw and see if the compressor's actually running or not. Oh. Might help if I put the wires back on the capacitor. I better short that out after doing that. Okay. Sometimes you get in too much of a hurry. Try that again. I don't hear no compressor. Nah, that compressor's definitely not running. Absolutely no amp draw on the compressor whatsoever. All right, guys, I'll get back to y'all.
Okay, so the plug is intact on the compressor. Now I'm gonna check it for thermal overload. too thick to get the 516 nut driver on the contactor on the 8 and one so I'll have to use the fillet. But the good thing is I don't have to take it all the way out. These are not circles. These are, I call them crow feet. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, the rain's slacking off a bit, so that's good. We got it there. We got it there. Well, so that means commons closed. Yep. We have continuity between all three. She just doesn't want to start. I'm gonna have to try a hard start. sure this unit's got refrigerant in it too but it looks like we're gonna have to try a start kit uh, everything is intact I'm gonna try it again and see if it see if I can get an inrush on it Let's see if I can get an inrush on it. I'll be damned, it started right up. That's okay, I got another set in the truck. Now, why did that compressor start all of a sudden? I'll be damned. Yep, we got amps. Maybe it was in thermal overload and it came out right as I was checking it. Okay, well it's low on gas. That's not a shocker with Linux. So my guess would be that it was in thermal overload and it came out of overload right when I started testing it. And I lost my damn meter leads to that damn outdoor fan motor. Man, this is going to be some shitty weather to try to be some shitty weather to try to add Freon in. 
Yeah, I mean, especially with this umbrella, I gotta stay under the damn umbrella. All right, we're definitely low on refrigerant. My tools covered up under the umbrella here, except for these. And I actually went ahead and pulled the top off of the unit and retrieved my meter leads and it didn't hurt them at all. It just knocked, it just knocked them out where they pull out. So my meter leads are fine and the compressor was boiling hot. So it had to be that uh, it was in thermal overload, but it just so happens it must've came out right when I was testing it. But we're definitely low on gas. That Linux coil is gonna be leaking. Probably has no warranty. So, you know, we're just, we're gonna gas it up for right now. And uh, I already know where the leak's gonna be. I already know where the leak's gonna be, so. We're, uh, we'll quote her out, a new air handler versus a whole new system. I mean, the condenser is fine. It doesn't need to be changed, but I'll leave that decision up to her. I don't have my scale, but I weighed it in the back of the truck before I came out here. And you can see my jug weighed 18 pounds, well, 18.12. So I'll just reweigh it when I get back to the truck and I'll know how much I used. Okay guys, I'm headed back into the attic to record the model and serial number because this is the low end Linux uh, air handler. And I've been told that these low-end Linux air handlers have ADP coils in them. The Allied store here, which is Armstrong Air, this is the same air handler as an Armstrong, and they have ADP coils, and they can cross the numbers and uh, get you the right ADP coil that, that is made for this cabinet. So I'm going to record this model and serial number, which I'll have to Un, you know, turn the camera off to do so because I'm on my phone and I'm going to see if we can find a uh, replacement coil, get a price on it. I'm also going to quote her a new air handler, but it will not be hanging like this. We will, we will build a deck right here. We'll take a piece of ply, a piece of half inch or probably three quarter inch plywood and put it on some little two by four legs to get it above that uh that two by six right there and set it down we uh we will replace the plenums reason being uh every time we do one of these jobs from this company the plenums are always rusted out on the inside and you can never get them off and they it leaves you and it leaves you nothing to screw to. So, two new plenums, a deck, and a new pan, and uh, then a quote on just the coil, and then a quote on an entire new system. And I'll let the customer make the decision. So I used to sell the Pro Stats. This is a top tech from Carrier, but it's the same thing. And when you sell the stats, they give you these for free. So I'm gonna pull that one off. It's a magnet and install that one. Now she knows how to get in touch with me. And I put a sticker on the unit.